you mentioned that you were hanging with a girl and that maybe it got a s- sexual. I wouldn't say sexual, just, you know, like easy stuff. Easy stuff. I couldn't imagine. What is easy? Dating a girl would be easy stuff. <laughs> Especially when you just... Just hang out, make out, stuff like that. You know, like not anywhere in like a public, you know, just hang out, make out, easy stuff. I think you should, if you're going to go gay, you have to go in public. You have to give people the joy of watching it. I love easy stuff. I love the sound of that. Also, wait. You are someone that does not scream easy stuff. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash trash Tuesday today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash trash Tuesday. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash trash Tuesday. That's rocketmoney.com slash trash Tuesday. Rocketmoney.com slash trash Tuesday. Hi, slugs. I am back on the road doing stand up. I'm having so much fun talking with you guys and answering your very weird questions. And I love sharing my material with you. I am going to be in New York City next. I'm going to be at Joe's Pub July 19th to 23rd. And I'm coming to the DC Improv September 28th, Boston. I'll be at the Wilbur, Madison, Wisconsin. Um, Detroit and Chicago all this fall. Get tickets at esteronice.com and I believe I'm adding San Diego as well. I love you. Hey guys, I'm so excited to see my sluggies. I am on tour always with the Welcome to Anywood tour. I'm going to be in Philadelphia, my hometown, August 11th and 12th. Look, I know it's summer, but I don't care. Summer ends on the 10th of August now, and you're going to come to these shows. Come hang out with me. I can't wait to see you. Um, I'll also be in Calgary at the Great Outdoors Comedy Festival with Andrew Schultz, August 27th. And I'll be in Austin, Texas, October 6th and 7th. Um, I will be at the Regent Theater with the Leah McSweeney live show on July 12th. Come see me there as well. And I have my podcast every Thursday, uh, Annie Wood. Come check it out. It's me and Todd and random guests talking about terrariums, baby. Todd only watches lesbian porn. That's wild. I yeah. love that. Todd I totally get porn. that. I think I most 95% of the time I'm watching lesbian porn. Yeah. I, it makes sense to me. It's like he's he, he wants to look at pussy. He doesn't and want to look at other dick. Doesn't it make sense like why he's into like a girl like me? Because I'm so like, like I'm definitely like a pegger without actually pegging. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you have I big peg, peg energy. energy. I have peg Bundy energy. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I feel like Todd's going to reveal that he wants to be pegged, but he keeps saying he isn't going to, but it's like. And how would you feel about that? I would 1 million percent do it try it yeah try. i'm not a lesbian porn girl like i i want to be degraded like i need to you know <laughs> you do look like jerry but a little bit what the fuck remember when he did oh you didn't watch fucking what did you watch so called life oh that's right i what didn't think they did a cover of that do you like do you like porn at all no wait i try not that- to watch it either I, I I just don't like every once in a while I like it. I used to really like James Dean before, you know, all of that. But I liked what I liked about him was that it was like forcing porn stars to have real orgasms. But then I guess there was too much forcing. <laughs> just to Allegedly. Speech. Liz, Allegedly. do you watch porn? I do. I feel like now it's like so all it's so easy to act as I bet like middle schoolers and even less, you know. Like that's Why'd you have to go there with it? Liz, oh my God. <laughs> like, I just feel like that's where it goes. Like that's where you start feeling, yeah. things, you know, oh. Like, oh, it's easy. Did I tell you guys this happened to one of my, a friend of mine has like teen kids and she found a, her daughter had made like a porn video. Her, uh, like pretty young daughter. Whoa. I mean, that is, well, didn't you do that? Yeah. <laughs> I Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you need to work on your fear of me. I'm scared of everyone hitting me. I, you know what that makes me think. 
We gotta hit you. <laughs> oh, stop. We Esther, but when you have you ever been hit? I don't know, but I this used to always be a thing. Like with my guy friends and stuff, they would literally just go like this, and they're like, "Why are you? Why did you think I was about to hit?" you? I have you? a question. Did um I'm during PE <laughs> during PE that balls just yes, happen to find your head, head or your face? Yes, and I you're damn right. I Were they gonna... spiking down? I mean, they're two feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> they always hit me in the head and I always went mm. to the nurse's office and made a meal out of it. <laughs> it hit me. <sighs> like you've never actually been... Stop being such a teen sex thing. <laughs> <laughs> so but you haven't actually been like spanked or or like hit, right? What'd you say, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> really wants to do it to you. What? I think we should... I need... Can there are two things I need you? this summer. Two things I need this summer. Okay. I need to teach you how to swim. And take a hit. And then Annie and I need to jump you. <laughs> I want to hit you. Jump you? The fact that you've never been hit, it's like taking some Yeah, just identity. take it. So you know how it's not... You, you never had you a live. friend in middle school that like punched you in the side of the head? Yeah. No. That's, I was like, with people like flicking their nails off to fuck me well, up. Okay. Or throw you in a bush? What yeah. about like a physical fight with like a referee? Like... I don't want to just have to stand Do not there. pass out that many boners right now. No, like, <laughs> like I want to be able to defend myself. But There's you guys no, you have no me. shot <laughs> to defend yourself. But you are a small you want target. To defend, I've never heard you say something like this in your life. You want to be able to defend yourself? I have I've never. That's the, that's the boldest thing I've ever heard you say. Kalila fights me, but I have Annie on my team. So it's just you guys <laughs> fighting each other. <laughs> it's two and versus one. We're on her. Somehow we're fighting over you. You figured this out. <laughs> She's clip clapping. She somehow how monetized it just for herself. Pulls out the lube. <laughs> None of us make a dollar. She's made like fucking 100 grand an hour. <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm in <laughs> um i saw what you did over the weekend um while i was lesbianing out you were trying to set me up with uh, pete davidson okay so did he break up with the girl i don't know and i don't care you're mean no i'm not you're mean you're mean, <laughs> you're mean. You're 10 so... minutes of this you're mean <laughs> <laughs> i performed at good nights in raleigh which they remodeled and our friend that the man I love him. He's so awesome. Um, I yeah, I love him so much. But so the next act after me who was coming to town was Pete Davidson, which I'm like, why is he playing this small comedy club? But he's, he was doing 15 shows, and um, the guy asked me to sign the wall there. And so I did, and underneath my name, since I knew, and it's a fresh wall because they just remodeled. And since I knew who was coming next, I left him a little message. And I said, Pete, I think you should date Kalila. <laughs> smiley face. And so he will see that. He will be sitting in that green room for the next seven days. I can't wait to get the call. Sometimes I get calls from Pete asking for my friend's phone numbers. Yeah, but I know I those wait. friends like, are, are in, you know, top tier. You're up there, baby. I mean, the pussy is, but you know what I mean? <laughs> the... The image right now is... Oh, my yeah. God. I can't anymore. He would be so lucky to date <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And he's into... We both have, like, IBS, I think, <laughs> or stomach problems. He has, yeah. He has Crohn's. Okay. I, I don't have Crohn's, but I have colitis. I think he has Crohn's. I think he just looks like he has Crohn's. No, no, no. no I think <laughs> he, he has, has He has Crohn's. I think, I think okay. Ariana, like, defended him one time he and said, Crohn's. like... I thought only Jewish people had Crohn's. Uh, <laughs> Johnny Pemberton has Crohn's. Why do you know Bear this? Margolis Stop this. Stop this. <laughs> Esther, you have Crohn's. <laughs> You're so powerful. Like, you're skinny and young. Honestly, you look like you could have Crohn's. It's it's skinny, young looking people. No, it's it. not. First of all, it's not funny. It's a disease. I have cousins who have it. That's you why don't I'm, give a shit about your cousins. I, I act like you care about your cousins. That's also, also true. Both things can be true. Get over your, you were supposed to be a boarded cousin. <laughs> no, now you that, care about that was my uncle. <laughs> <sighs> but anyways, I just, I don't know. I'm cooking up a little, I think. A look, little doo-doo because you have Crohn's? <laughs> You fucking <laughs> no, a little love narrative, a storyline. She's sick. A manifestation because you know. Oh what? my god! They gave her one commercial to direct, and look at her now. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I can direct the world. Like, She's like, you're gonna need a morning after pill after this. <laughs> you do a Julie. It's all a secret commercial for Julie. <laughs> Wait, this is. Oh yeah, hidden camera, Julie. <laughs> I submitted to the brand. They're like Esther. We did not ask for this. <laughs> But no, because subliminal messaging works. Just so you know, ab all those advertisements we see over the years where it's like Doritos, Gushers, whatever, when we were kids, we'll never forget those. He is going to be sitting in that room staring at that wall for eight days. 
and it's going to say that's what you do in the green room <laughs> <laughs> you don't work on your jokes or like <laughs> you, you don't wait you don't sit on the wall by yourself <laughs> just read the co- i don't you don't read the wall <laughs> the comments read the room not the wall is okay <laughs> Yeah, so it's not a prison. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do push-ups. And you're there by choice. You know, you choose to go perform. You can leave. It's a it's a gift we get to do. It's a, <laughs> a lovely job. <laughs> Me before I go on. I well, thank you, Esther. I think you've done a really good job. Um, um, trying to set I me would up. love that that would actually be so cute with Pete mm-hmm. I'd like Pete yeah I think so I want that big dick he, in my girl it's oh well, my thank god you, I don't I want that big all. cock no blowing does he up really that. have a big cock yes because you does. know I'm not a really big cock kind of guy. but girl it's time <laughs> <I'm> enough <laughs> here's <laughs> why see he is dating a lot right like Pete we love you we're you know I think he's in love show. I think right now he's currently in love maybe <laughs> maybe who knows but I'm just saying, it's like he needs a girl. Did you just say friend of the show? Yeah, friend of the show, Pete Davidson. So sad. For hey, he was on my old podcast, Weird Adults. That makes him a friend when of the show. When he was <laughs> underage, <laughs> his dad was still alive. 9 no, 11 hadn't no. happened. It was pre 9 11. <laughs> I think that what he needs is a woman who is beautiful. You thinking you know what a person needs is so <laughs> disgusting. And calling them a friend of the show when there's no way you have his phone number. There's no way you have anything. To- I have a phone number associated <laughs> with his name at one point. <laughs> we have a couple old versions of Pete phone numbers. Yeah. yeah. You Are you guys going to change your phone numbers, by the way? What kind of a question is that? That's the dumbest. What you're That's at- such a cool question. <laughs> Are you thinking that? I think... That is a cool question to ask. You stupid idiot. By the way, <laughs> this fame hungry <laughs> loser to say that, like starve to be like this fame. You're going up to Kylie Jenner. You're disgusting. You think Kylie Jenner doesn't change her phone number? It was Kendall, bitch. I don't know the difference. I'm not I a loser. I feel like Kylie would have been nicer. Kylie would have been nicer. Thank you. You chose the wrong Kylie one. Kylie would. No one would be nice to you. By the way, I'm so sorry. None of the Kardashians would be nice to you. I disagree. <laughs> and I'm going to prove you wrong one day. <laughs> I hope you do. I'm going to. Grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> Were you guys a. Jay Leno or a David Letterman household? David. Both. David Letterman for me. I have to draw a very, very, very important line in the sand right now. I'm so tired of these rules. Okay, well. I'm, it's just not a thing. And I know what you're going to do. One last one. This is like, when you sign a friend, you have yeah. to pick. No, I actually, how about this? How about I'm the bitch that doesn't, I pick it all. I get it all. Do you want to be like me? I can have it all. <laughs> no. I can have it all, I, right, business this, manager? Can I have that purse? From this moment forward, I will only associate with people who are Letterman households. You fall, you do, because you are both, I will make an exception for Because here's what I'll tell you. Letterman obviously was like our our main, because he's fucking so sharp and mean. He was mean. He's just the coolest. He's so mean. It's so good. He's fucking mean. And then, but Jay, I personally really love Jay. And then... Having, me- I love Jay Leno. Have you worked with him at Flappers or anything? No. He's around. He is amazing. He's so good. He'll talk to you. He'll like, he'll tell you stuff. I'm gonna, I'm standing strong in my line in the sand. Leno as a person is a separate issue than what late night show did you grow up watching? How about that? We separate it. I, I, I watched them both. I watched them both. I liked them both. I'd f- flick back and forth. I have ADD. I choose them <laughs> I choose everything. I don't have, there's not one thing I choose. I choose it all. Do you want me to make a choice right now? <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. I sneeze in three. Sorry. Did you guys have TV in the Philippines? We did, mommy. <laughs> we sure did. Um, you were Letterman? Ma, I think things got it. To us, a little slow. So my dad was still stuck on like reruns of like Gary. You were like Carson. (laughs) (laughs) Oh yeah, Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson. That would be who your dad liked, I'm sure. That would be who you like. (laughs) Shut the hell up! I only watch the Twilight Zone. I like black and white. Aren't I so intriguing? I'm cool. I'm different. Oh quirky. God! I'm a quirky girl. You're a pick me girl, but for like grandpas. Yes, that's <laughs> accurate. <laughs> no lies detected. That is correct. You know what I was realizing? I have a pick me thing in my. That's so weird. okay. So, I, when I was going through and getting rid of all of my like um, things that I'm mailing list, I'm subscribed to. I mean, my my Gmail is wild. I mean, it is just. 
Yeah. Memorial Day sales. No, <laughs> digital clutter is like scary. It's like all I have. Like I think back in the day when I wasn't working a lot, I was like, I want to feel like things are happening. So yeah. I was like, click, subscribe, all of it, send me your, but it's out of control. Like I do not get work emails. <laughs> it, I was very close to being late to our work meeting today because I could not find that fucking, I could not find that email. <laughs> But one of the things, one of the mailing lists that I will never unsubscribe to is um, True Swords. What's that? Which is a, it's a website that sells swords. Because in my pick me years, I realized the best sword to, or the best present to get a boyfriend is a sword. <laughs> you will never, I pro you buy a man a sword. That is, I promise you, you will be getting him his favorite present he's ever been given. You're not, okay, here's where I think you're absolutely right. So um, when Bobby and I moved from apartment to the new house, he basically didn't care what was left behind except for some swords. Some oh swords. God. Yeah, and so when he, we keep it by the door and there was a time where we thought we someone was breaking into the home. And you've grabbed the sword, and the he, present. He had, he already had it in his mind how he was going to defend me and he he went for the sword. And um, it was really cute. And was he pushing you in front? Yeah, of the yeah, sword? yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he like threw oh, me in front, but he had this, the katana. It was a katana yes. um, right behind me. So I do, I do this think you're right. This is my brand this. of pick me girl, being that girl. <laughs> do you understand? That is, yeah. I have so many swords. So when I used to do Mean Inspiration, my original solo podcast, uh, people kept wanting to send me presents. And I was like really uncomfortable with that at that point. Like I just didn't feel comfortable having people send me things. So I was like, all right. There's one stipulation, it has to be a weapon. Cause then I figured if they send me them, it's I can protect myself against them. <laughs> With the do you know the energy of, but so I do have a lot of swords. Esther, I get the feeling you're not a sword girl. I'm just really- Cause they're taller than you, the swords? No, I, like maybe it's just like the cuck liberal in me, but <laughs> I am not a weapons girly. Are you coming out as a cuck liberal? <laughs> Uh, oh, wait, wait. No, I just don't. we are not a weapons girl. You like just me. said you needed to defend yourself. How are you going to do that? I'll do weapons. That. Weapons like make me so cri cringe. You need out. weapons. You're the one that needs <laughs> weapons. Ding dong. Like I'm sure Dave has, you know, system in place. But what is he going to CPAP him to death? <laughs> hey. You'd be surprised. You watch your oxygen pack. is flammable. <laughs> he could do that and then light them on fire. Oh, wait a second, Don't Esther. I, also, your dog is like the least protective <laughs> dog. dog is this big. <laughs> I want to dive into this because I think this is a real thing. So you're just like not a weapons girly. No, like you've you? never had like you a taser. You've never had pepper spray. You've never, <gasps> as a girl, as small as you, you've never had that. Wait, I have a Trash Tuesday. Um, this is, we're gonna actually, I didn't actually ask you guys this ahead of time, but we're gonna start going on road trips, okay? We're doing like, we're doing <laughs> field trips. Thing. We're doing field trips. I know what you do on road trips and I'm scared. Adderall? Or snort, oh. no Oh, Adderall. I'm sorry, I'm gonna be able to read all of the, <laughs> the signs really well. The Zix Road. Actually, you on Adderall driving me around is ideal. The amount of time people think I'm on Adderall where I'm like, I'm on Adderall like once a year and people are like, she's on Adderall. I'm like, no, 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 no. This is literally, this is my everyday. Just feel pity for Todd. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes, you know, we're faced with tough choices in life and uh, the path forward isn't always clear, but I would always say getting help is the right thing to do and sometimes it's hard to get, so better help is a great option to get started. You don't have to worry about going to an office, finding parking, running into people in the building. It's just really simple. There's no waiting. You just do it all online and you can keep a a journal, you can switch out with different therapists. It's just a really easy way to do what's right for yourself. And, you know, I always find these, these things that are actually really good for me, I resist them, I resist them, I resist them. So if there's something like parking or traffic that's in the way, I will use that as an excuse to, as an excuse to not do it. And I think that BetterHelp really cuts those excuses out. Sometimes in life we are faced with tough choices and the path forward isn't always clear. That's why meeting with someone at BetterHelp will help you 
calm yourself enough to really decide what the right decision is for you. Whether you're dealing with decisions around career relationships or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while navigating your life. So you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash trash Tuesday to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash trash Tuesday. <laughs> We're talking about Rocket Money. It's a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Because 80% of people that have have subscriptions usually forget about it, and I am definitely one of those. And the amount of money that I unnecessarily spend without even knowing is obnoxious just because I forget to cancel it after seven days. I had one where it was, I'm not even going to name them because I don't want to give them free advertisement, even if it is bad. Like they charged me for six months. I never used the service. I was impossible. It was definitely exercise. It was impossible <laughs> to cancel. And Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions for you. And for any that you don't want to pay anymore, just hit cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. It's that easy. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. Rocket Money also helps you manage all of your finances in one place and automatically categorizes your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks off. Stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash trash Tuesday. That's rocketmoney.com slash trash Tuesday, rocketmoney.com slash trash Tuesday. Field trip. Field trip. We have to go shoot guns. I would yeah. try that. It's so fun. Mm -hmm. You know what we used to do in the desert is we used to fill up like pumpkins. Scariest sentence with ever. Um, water yeah. and. I didn't things. think it was going to be about a pumpkin. You guys, I lived in Vegas for years. You don't mm -hmm. think that I've shot ARs? I have. Like I'm a fucking, I'm a fucking assault rifle bitch. I dated a guy. I lived with a guy who's like assault rifle guy. Like he has. So Thank you. I, that's what we did on the weekends was like shoot guns and shoot up, up into things. The many things. lives a pretty girl can have just based on the different guys she's been with. It's really fascinating. Like, yeah, I was can, a Fox News baby. I mean, yeah, like this is like if had I stayed there a little longer, you know, Were maybe you I'd be the opposite of a cuckoo rich, girl. Super rich. <laughs> <Were you> like, <laughs> <laughs> super rich right wing. Super rich right wing. I would have been. You know, do maybe? you ever feel the carrot dangle in front of you of like just being like, should I just go full fucking? <laughs> no, because that's fake. Wait, so we're gonna go out and shoot guns, is what you're saying? I like everyone being on all sides and so, not knowing where I am. Esther, are you down? Are yeah, you gonna I have a I weapons just got day? Eyeshadow all over my eyebrows. You did. No, you didn't. Okay. No, that would be great. I didn't know you were wearing eyeshadow. That's eyeshadow. <laughs> That's you with makeup on? Wait. I'm so sorry. Did you put makeup on? Sir? Is that from yesterday? <laughs> no, it was. T Never mind. <laughs> Never Bye. mind. Wait, I have a, I have a, I want to propose something to you, Esther. So in the Philippines, like the Philippines is like the birthplace of a lot of weapons fighting. Arnis, Eskrima, um, Balintawak, like a lot of these really cool, like most of the choreographers Did you say are like. Eskrima? Eskrima. Eskrima, Arnis. So basically a lot of like the choreographers for like weapons fighting, even in Hollywood, usually have a background in like Filipino martial arts because that's where most of like weapons fighting happen. I would love to have one of those guys teach you how to do like a, you know, a bali song, like a butterfly knife. She's not going to do a butterfly knife. Or even knife. the stick fighting. What about stick if fighting? She's scared of butterflies. If it's... Be able to do a butterfly knife. <laughs> they are scary. If you've ever seen a big one get close to your head, it's it can be very scary. Are you well, sure? Because you're the same size as it. Butterflies are not like the monarchs, always. Esther. Yeah. No, butterflies are not scary at any stage they're, in their metamorphosis. Oh, so we're scared of just spiders. The butterflies are still bugs. I'm not scared of bugs, you ding. You know that Todd has turned into a terrarium guy. We just have like. I'm listening. Okay. Frogs. You better keep that man away from me. <laughs> <laughs> frogs. I know you actually would fit in some of the time. I love frogs. He's a lizards. dart frog. A poison dart frog. Two of them. Yeah, poison dart frog. He has a gecko. Frog? Yeah, he's a gecko. He has a gecko? 
Mm-hmm. He that has. Um, great. He killed one of our crabs, and I'm like really not. I started. I did my ketamine, my mind bloom ketamine treatment, and I came out of it, and I started crying about how he killed one of our crabs. Wait, you had a crab in the Two same crabs? As no, place as the gecko? He has, no, Todd has three terrariums. Oh, he started okay. uh, one week ago, and he has three terrariums now. <laughs> That's not gonna end well. But Esther, do you know that? Do you eat like uh, shellfish, like lobster, or any of that? Can you get me a fucking lobster? What? It's lobster season's <laughs> over. Oh, this fucking. Wait, did you just lobster. think she was the waiter? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanted to spear it. You can't spear it. You just grab it with your hand. You could do it. I would love to do choreographed for the stage fighting. That I'll do any day. I did okay. That in high school. By the I... way, hello. Oh shit. <laughs> Great idea. Yeah, I'll fence. Or Do you understand how funny that actually is? Is a, a true idea? Yeah, I'm down. Well, for our live show, I feel shows, like she'd be yeah. really good at jujitsu because you're a dancer. So you're naturally very coordinated. Oh my god, and I would love your little to limbs pass could submit guard on you. Oh my god, I think you'd be really good. I think you'd pick it up. So the earrings, fast. you have to take the earrings out. It's annoying. I don't. Those are just cuffs. Yeah. Is that a real one? No, this one is not. This one is. Wait. I have a really important question. Do you guys want to change your phone numbers? Like, <laughs> we'll get back to that. I do want to get back to that, but this is more important right now. Do you like steak? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm having a like something is wrong with me because we went to a steak dinner last night for Dave's birthday, and I literally like I was like, oh, I like eat more meat now. Like, I'm gonna actually have to take. I, does nothing for me it has like no taste you're like oh can i just put my stuff in it and carry it around <laughs> <laughs> so annoying uh, i don't like steak what is it doesn't well how did you get it cooked yeah. well dave got it medium rare you is... oh good oh, good good <laughs> you were I was ready like, to... oh i was just gonna i knew you were gonna get like well done or you're something. on yeah. autopilot with me <laughs> oh i was disgusted i was so mad <laughs> <laughs> I actually think well done. I would like it better. I hate you. <laughs> I hate your fucking guts. You don't yes, deserve sir. to be here. But it's like soft and red. You like that? What? I like rare, like yeah. where it's cold and like yes, right, like yeah. on the inside, okay. so good. What is what is? Can you tell me why you like it? Because I'm a real woman, a real person. Why don't you just graduate to medium rare? Start with medium. You well would be first. so dead. Do you understand? Like if you were born <laughs> earlier than this, you'd be fucking dead. What do you mean earlier than this? Like. If, yeah, if you ever had to hunt or gather or do anything, like, I understand why you flinch because you're, like, so little. Like, you're not, you didn't survive. Here's how I would survive. Are you ready? <laughs> oh. <laughs> they would rape you to death. <laughs> to death. To death. No. They don't, you'd start talking. You're annoying. You know you're annoying, right? <laughs> Oh just God. mid like there's like a support group for people that have worked with you wait hold on so you know you're annoying right is the funny <coughs> sentence wait because i know i'm annoying but i don't know if you know you're annoying you don't think i know i'm annoying are you kidding of course i know i'm annoying <laughs> i don't think kalila knows she's annoying <laughs> <laughs> not oh annoying. my god that's because i don't get out of the house who am i annoying to <laughs> yeah, my <Their> dogs, dogs. <laughs> yes. jewels and my dog bitch sucks. your dog is vicious <laughs> no because i am willing to consider and examine that i am annoying possibly on this podcast or wherever I'm no. hurt, but like in my real life, I was I'm just like, trying to include you. I didn't want you to get FOMO for annoying. No, no, no. I want to be annoying, but like to who? Like my inanimate objects at home. I just do stay home and I play oh, Lego. You not just imagine her putting them all inside herself, all the objects. What? No, and you when sicko. You... You're sick. Ew. <laughs> You're so, <laughs> so sick. gross. You guys, am I a les? Are you? Only you can yeah. tell us that, sweetheart. That's true. Maybe I'm just in an era. Maybe I'm just. um You don't like big dicks. That's pretty gay. <laughs> That's pretty gay. That's pretty gay for me not to like. Huge That's dicks. lesbian as shit. Really? Well, it's not not lesbian for yeah. sure. Well, the girl that um, I did easy um, kissing with, she is really into straight girls. Hmm. So I was like. Ooh, what a torture and she, life and, that is. <laughs> I know. And I was like, wait a second. Terrible. I was like, am I like, do I read really straight to you? And she's like, yeah. Yeah. You're a straight girl. I'm like, oh, thank you. But also, like, let's make out then. Did you ask her what she thinks of Esther? I mean, could you have been more lesbian? You put your hair back, <laughs> her shoulders out. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, do you do you, what, yeah, I wonder. Yeah, can she diagnose me? Diagnose you? Well, prescribe. Oh, get her TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> diagnosed. Yeah, her. like give me what my reading is. She's getting Let's... red. She's getting nervous. She's seeing herself on TikTok getting taken out. <laughs> <laughs> the teens. Um, wait, can I just though spotlight my uh, HBO Britney Spears Live from it's Las Vegas so promotional great. shirt that I ordered from uh, eBay from like... 2004. It's excellent. Four. Thank you. It's a great top. I'm really proud of it. It's really, really good. It's really amazing. I like the hair stubble too on your armpits. Oh, oh God. That was. <laughs> no, it's good. It's, that is a true. lot worse than it's I thought. True. It is true. It's honest. Does Dave pluck your nipple hair? No, it's really? not like that with us. Oh. Really? Yeah. No, I'm just like, I don't have anybody for that. <laughs> and you wear like no tweezies. Like, what do you guys like? My favorite activity to do with um, a lover is for them she can't to, say boy anymore because we don't ah, love her. <laughs> it's for them to tweeze my shin hairs. Oh, it like, hurts it's so, but it's like an itchy hurt, yeah. and it feels so good, and it's so bonding because they wear like a little headlight. Mm. And they oh my god, were they spelunking? Head. What is this? I will okay. I swear on everything. I am not trying to like. You don't have hair. No, we no, saw, no. We've seen. I'm not trying. This is not romantic at all. I just think for bonding, if we did the three of us have a sleepover, I think that's like the perfect activity to do. If we all do it together, pluck each other's chin, chin hairs. Chin. 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 chin hairs. I'll pluck the hair off your chinny. Chin, no, 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 chin. no, no, no. No, I'm gonna pluck your ass hair. Fine, come I, get it. Ew. I'm okay with that. I'm a, yeah, I don't really, when I get waxed in my backside, I don't feel anything, do you? No, but that fucking. The front, front pad, pad is oh my the worst. God, guys. I had the worst wax recently because I hadn't gotten one since I. Oh, did that. you go back? Yeah, finally. And it was, it was so bad. It's not okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm like traumatized. I'm, I haven't gone back. I go into fight or flight. Like, it's so painful and horrible. Well, I told you I did my legs. My beef, my butt, my... Your beef? Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to get Les for you. Beef, baby. You have not heard that one in quite some time. Leave it to beef. <laughs> um, but, and armpits, and it was just, it was a long, it was like two hours. I was losing my mind. That's horrible. And I was just butterfly to open the whole time. Just like, okay, here yeah. we are. Yeah, it's just that one main pad, though. The sides don't yep. hurt. The lips don't hurt that bad. It hurts, but n like right up yes. front and center Ugh. is a pain I just don't even wish on anyone. It was so anyone. upsetting, and I don't, I don't know if I can ever do but it again. Did you guys watch any of the LuLaRoe documentaries? Oh, the whole my thing? God, I did. I didn't even know LuLaRoe was a thing. So I went in just with fresh eyes, didn't know this whole, like, culture existed didn't know that there was a multi-level marketing scam that was happening and i with like fancy leggings because i could have been a victim of that well they were 25 dollars a pair i don't think we should call them fancy leggings but you're right it's like are you jewish or not what do you mean <laughs> well that i wouldn't call them fancy also let's be real the lulu row clothing makes me so physically uncomfortable like Same. it's the most ugliest clothing i've ever seen to the point where i'm like I'm so uncomfortable with it. I think we need to do a themed episode and all dress in it. Well, I was, sh oh my God, can we buy it from that that black lady that was like. Yeah, with a son. Oh my She's God. She's not selling it though anymore. She has it all in her. Oh, she does? She in her garage. It. Yeah. Let's buy it all from her. Okay. Because they're just storing it there. She felt so like, um, she like when she felt she was like blaming herself for not selling it. She was like the only one that hadn't like snapped out yet. I feel you guys. We watched this. All three of us watched this documentary on Max called "The Rise and Fall of Lularoe," and it's basically about a multi-level marketing um, clothing um, brand, yeah. and where people were basically scammed into selling clothes, basically similar to what's another weird like, Herbalife, they Arl have Terra, they have like Mary nail Kay, ones, nail things, yeah, nail, like. I got, you guys know, I got like invited to a meeting for one of these things once. To For LuLaRoe? No, for Arbonne. I don't know if you've heard Oh, Arbonne, yeah. What I, is that I, one? I, I had to unfollow all Wait, of my Arbonne friends. This is what they're saying is now? I know, yeah. 
You sat there and Annie, Libby? it's not cute. Annie, Look up there compared wait, to what it was. It's L-U-L-A-R-O-E, LuLaRoe. Why do I feel like Annie's going to become a LuLaRoe, like... Rep. <laughs> I got to get that Louis Vuitton purse. Wait, I'll, and you get me to work under you? <laughs> oh what I found God. the most interesting, though, is that... And somehow you're, you get <laughs> above God. me and take my, all my money. <laughs> there are some, here's the thing. I know. I can guess what they meant. Remember they were saying it's buttery soft? Yeah. I used to, like... For um, Christmases, I would always get all the women in my family, like, ugly leggings. That was, like, a thing. We, and we would take pictures in our ugly leggings. And they rip immediately. Like, I know what material. These are, like, the cheapest. But I don't I don't think it's buttery soft because true buttery soft is, like, I, I have a Beyond Yoga and, like, aloe yoga and the buttery soft ones are not the shiny ones like this mm -mm. these no. ones are soft but and stretchy but they're not the soft i just I have didn't a, know how they tear like i know like i, I used to get these weed leggings all the time i'd have to rebuy them constantly because they would always tear well the thing that sucked so bad in the documentary where you're like oh my god they really just made this like a game for everyone is they would encourage the reps to buy boxes of the clothes but you didn't know what and they would send like, even uglier ones. Yeah, yeah, so you would just get these uglier and uglier leggings to have to sell and no one wanted to buy them. And then the worst part is how they talked about like if you got a box of black leggings, those would sell like that. And I'm just like, why can't everyone just get the black leggings then? Like why is this – why is – the system is so – Yeah, and evil. And this is why we haven't seen any sleepover by Esther in a while. Huh? <laughs> she doesn't know anything have... about <laughs> – My well, little reps out there. I think it's fucked up that they had to spend anywhere from like 5 to 10K up front to even get this mystery box of clothes that they would have to sell. But what I didn't find surprising is that Dina and her husband, the people who started LuLaRoe, were from a Mormon church. Yeah. And so that to me, that whole evangelical kind of really good at marketing their message types, it makes sense that they were able to convince people to really get on board because I think they have the background of church, like that exceptionalism kind of mentality. Aren't you Mormon? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I was brought up Mormon. <laughs> uh, no, I um, had... One of my campers, when I worked at Easter Seals, I used to go hang out with his family all the time. Is that what I am to you? One of your campers? From Easter Seals? I don't know what that is, but... It's special kids with special needs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just carry on with your story. Yes. <laughs> I could see you. You're about equal like, in abilities as some of my campers Thank were. Thank you. My cerebral palsy. <laughs> but um, I used to hang out go to like, pizza night with them. And they, um, they had a... They would call it their business... And it was like a, a place where they would buy all their groceries and they would only go to that website and then they would get other people under them and then they would each get money from all the people that were under them. But it was like you had to buy all your groceries from there and get other people to buy your groceries from there. I have an idea. Let's do a... A scam? No, Try but like one scam. of our, why don't we just like in our merch site, I think we should have our own special line of Tupperware. <laughs> okay. We can be, we can like re, you know, we can, how do I say, rebrand the whole like Tupperware party. Do you understand that literally in the last two weeks I've been thinking about hiring an actor to play out what a classic like 90s, 80s Tupperware party was like? Like I literally want to have friends over and like have a fake Tupperware party. Like I want to have that experience that like all of our moms have. I like how it would be fake, but you like somehow end up with money at the end. <laughs> Like all of us are broke and you have all our money. Maybe in our live show, we should have like a segment that's us like trying to sell everyone Tupperware. <laughs> Wait, but do you work? guys remember in like the early 2000s, like right out of college, I would go to these like sex toy parties where they would. Oh, show yeah. You. Those yeah, were yeah. fun. Like those didn't job, feel like. Like they give you like blowjob lessons. Yes. I thought yeah. those were really cute and fun and yeah, they I... didn't feel super like culty. I do think there is like a place for like being a woman or dildos yeah there's a place there's two places actually oh my god Three, I have, if you want to put it in your mouth <laughs> speaking of dildos i have a really huge update for you guys okay um you know how i've been like anti-toys because anti you didn't you give yourself a infection or something no that was the, um, the old lube. lube oh the old lube the, the, the roll over lube. Lube. <laughs> i remembered <laughs> I learned so much from you. You cannot have rollover lube. I didn't partner. know that. It's a curse. You cannot have rollover lube from the One last partner, partner per per bottle. Per bottle. That's a good rule. So I um I was away for a little bit and I was really bored and I was going through some type of like 
mental spiraling that day and i was like what am i gonna do to get myself out of this funk so i was like i'm just gonna sex death Speaking marathon spiraling <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna sex death marathon myself i'm gonna fuck <laughs> myself to death right and so i was uh, like it sucks when you can't feel it anymore when you're like what am i doing this for well that's what happens. it starts to hurt and then you so, go into the numbness and you're i like, went what? everyone that's out there true. is always come you know a random sunday afternoon like i'm gonna sex death marathon they are esther well, no, like I had... you're not relatable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm busy bed rotting. OK, <laughs> so I am relatable. <laughs> and so you're just too lazy to finger yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is a sex death marathon, please? So it's when either you're on the verge of like extreme pan, like a panic attack, which I felt like I was. I was pacing around. And I remember one of my good friends saying, like, I went through like years of like extreme like anxiety. But when I it would verge on panic attacks i would just jerk off furiously and like come and come and come and it would get me out of my own head because it is such a primal feeling and so i was having like a mental health day and i was like what do i do what do i do i'm alone and so i went to centrally yours and then i bought a whole lot i channeled my inner annie and esther and i bought like four hundred dollars <laughs> worth of toys wait fuck you what wait <laughs> well, you That's... guys have toys right yeah I have the. You, I have a toy or two. I never. Yeah, like, it's like, I would no, never. Esther, you said you don't leave town. Like you panic when you don't have. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I bring two as a. I have a backup one, and I was at the charger. Okay. But, okay. But the clit suckers, all of this stuff. That. Like you guys have that stuff that I've never tried because I'm like, oh, I don't want to play with any of that stuff. So I bought four hundred dollars worth of stuff, which is really only two things. But I, I had I like a mini haul. And I was really excited. I was like, sex, death, marathon, sex, It was death, not an marathon. unboxing. It was a an inboxing. In <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And so I whipped it all out. I dis you know, I right out the package. Do you boil your stuff or do you not? Boil. Yeah, right. Yeah, fucking boil. right. I'll throw boiling water on myself to feel again <laughs> do afterwards. Do I boil it? No, I've never cleaned a vibrator. Are you insane? Oh, my God. So it I gets cleaned. Listen. It, it, it gets cleaned at some point, but it's like, no. it's because there's a point of no return. Something the, has to happen. The <laughs> vagina is a self-cleaning cleaning oven and that applies. This is toys. unacceptable. Yeah. Actually, we are gross. We are bad. I disagree. Don't. I disagree. I think you're, I think you're good. <laughs> I think you're so good. You're, you're this is misinformation. <laughs> and if we didn't have like the COVID thing on the bottom. <laughs> this is misinformation. If you're going to get canceled. You can go on Dr. Drew's podcast. <laughs> Please don't carry on about your inner Annie and Esther. Is that what you call your each labia? Yeah, each labia. <laughs> Annie and One's Esther. bigger, one's smaller. <laughs> Both very annoying. <laughs> Get in the way. And um, so this is what I did. I had a whole afternoon to myself and then I went hog wild and I... This was yesterday? No. This oh, was I thought like, it was like after us. There's, there's been some time. <laughs> the therapy. The therapy. <laughs> and I, at the end of it all... I couldn't feel my clit. My clit was completely dead. And uh, that's when you do the stranger when it feels like you're you're. Uh, What's a stranger for girls? The stranger for girls is where you finger yourself until you can't feel it, and then it feels like you're fingering a, a stranger. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you're fingering oh someone else. Oh my god! Did you just make that up? No. Why did you know about that? I made it up, but I didn't make it up just now because I've numbed my pussy many a years, many a times. <laughs> okay. But you guys, after I was done. I was like, I hated that. Like, I don't, I couldn't, I, it just was, my, I lost all go, sensitivity. No, because this and is I put it away, I put the boxes away, and I put them on such a high shelf so that I'll never use them again. But you will use them again. I will never use them again. That was a one and done, my clit is dead. R.I.P. What did you use? What everything. Did you get? Why did I, you I even it? used, I had an anal plug, I had everything. You did? Yeah, I had everything. Well, you, you made put it went in. a little crazy. Wait, you put an anal plug? I don't have an anal, yeah. I've never I've anal plug. I've never plugged. done that. I've, I've seriously like double I gave penetrated. you one, I gave you a cute one, remember? Oh yeah. <laughs> Funny it was tale. real. It was like real rabbit. I need to find that. Hey, oh my god! I should have brought that up in therapy, bitches. Remember when I've dropped money on you, bitches? <laughs> you to me? I fucking drop money. I dropped cash. My business manager is like, "Why'd you buy a five hundred dollar butt plug?" <laughs> oh. Look, I think that he like acts of uh, gifts. I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out these bitches' fucking love language. So I DP'd myself, and then after that, I I'm you I'm, deplete you DP depleted yourself. I did. What? No, here's the thing. It's double pen, and that's it. I'm done. Everything I, down there it, it i remember someone once saying to me that they went 
Masturbation's healthy. I go, not the way I do it. <laughs> I go like four hours past it feeling good. I'm like, oh, why are you still here? No, okay, that's what I was doing. Cause I would come and then I was like, oh, got one more in there. I know I have one more in there. And I was this I don't usually watch porn in this way, but I had it on for hours. You're pillow princessing yourself. You're like, oh. And if I had even one negative self thought, I was like, oop, back in there. Press play. Like what is it, was, it? It was insane. It was an insane thing, but it did get me out of my head that day. It just kept mm. me in primal mode. That is true. It's I could see that being meditative and it, it was hitting the spot. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, what's your review of having a butt plug in by yourself? Um, it was okay. So I'm not a big anal girl. Like I'm afraid of anal. So I was like, why don't I just control the narrative here? Because when dudes usually do it, I'm like, uh, you know, like I don't. Oh my god! And it is it, that it's has better to be a part of why they like it too. It's like, guys, do you like that? It's like, there's you know, it's kind of hurting us. I think so. I think that's part of it. I don't know. I, what is? Yeah, I think it's just that it's like forbidden. Yeah, and like no, no, really no. naughty. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Um, I don't know. But if it does feel slightly better when you do it yourself, I think. Hmm. I, I'm I like, you don't have to go in my ass. So you can be around it. I love around. Fine. Around is like that's. Oh my God, Esther's an anal princess. I didn't say that. Why are you? Why are you saying that? I just feel like if a dick went in your ass, it would like poke your head. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> it's like, what is it's happening my, up here? Why is she just the crown mouth. of your? It's a full, it's a full <laughs> kebab. Pull, pull it, just pull it out. <laughs> an Esther kebab. <laughs> it's lule. <laughs> oh my sick. goodness! You're, you two are really honestly sickening me. remember when i told you one of your ex-boyfriends was like she's a freak shut up <laughs> who said that well there's one of two i can be telling okay. you about. <laughs> yeah. and it's i would say the nicer one uh the nicer but the one, maybe yeah. more embarrassing one stop mm -hmm. just stop right there you're done <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but i but you reacted better to it this time you're like he did stop last right. time you were like ew why did he say that and i was like I think it was before you were on Lexa Pro, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Well, any time, like, yeah, I'm I'm at peace now with my past. Now we know you're a, a flexi. I am not, bro. though. That's not even true. I don't th I don't even think it's true. You're I think that same person was the one going around telling, like, other male comics that, like, your asshole was delicious. I think that was someone else. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. Do you guys think I should get um, trap talks? What's up? It's Botox on my traps because, you know, I'm overdeveloped here and I'm like, you know, I'm kind of like Ugh. you're something is going to pick it up somewhere else and be fucking weird as shit. You know that, right? No, wait, what? what do you mean? Some other muscle is going to pick that up instead of having <laughs> pop it out in some weird spot. <laughs> I oh, you're not going to have to stop asserting the same amount of energy. It's just going to go to a different area. <laughs> no, you're but, right, because I think I've overdeveloped traps because I hold tension here and I do this a lot. But also just I was learn to relax. Just work on relaxing. The, the thing is the dildo with, up again. with trap talks, put your butt plug in, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what I see people talking about is like that they think it makes them look better, which I think is actually so disturbing. Like, literally, what you're like, I was born without traps and I look like shit. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, but like, what won't we do to our bodies? Like, to just they literally get Botox in here so that who gives a fuck about this? It's part? not for pain, no, no, it's not. It's, it's literally so that you have like and your less... neck looks longer. I think I actually you want you to get it now. I want you to get it. I want you to get it. For pain, I would I'm like support that, but for looks is weird. I've always had overgrown traps. No, it's not a thing. It is. Wait, a thing. you're doing no. a position though to make it look that way. You guys, there's a reason why I'm like I I'm an ama Take your amazing. Take your and stand up straight. <laughs> I'm amazing yes. at deadlift. Like, Actually, so much of the deadlift bit. is here. <laughs> but I was a I swam butterfly, so I've always had overgrown traps. I've had overgrown. Cool, traps. that's like, great. That's a badge of honor. Do you want trap talks? I don't know you. You're the one who sent it to me because <laughs> oh I just think. It's oh, that's so rude! I didn't. I sent it to what, both can of we, you. Can we have her? Um, can she we have send her? it to you too. <laughs> well, I'm glad. I, see, sometimes. <laughs> but 
can we do a fat transfer of your shitty fucking shoulders on her non-existent <laughs> shoulders? <laughs> I sent it to you. I like whole. my body, you guys. I just want to like myself. No, this is so, this is actually really interesting. I did oh, not. Oh, is it? You're not allowed to say that about yourself. I didn't send it to you to because I thought you should get it. I sent it to you guys because I thought it was absurd that women are like going around being like, look at how beautiful I am now that I, my traps right, and so are I, gone. I've been seeing a lot of women um, before their weddings because they have to wear um, like two dresses or show expose their shoulder and neck they're getting like, have to you know they don't have to but girls are like i'm absolutely gonna yeah, get let me see before botox in my traps but what's it for what was initially like why did someone try this this is like your traps are holding up your head and shit <laughs> this is like what are we doing i have a big head to hold oh up. it does look cute oh annie uh, i kind of see oh, no you Oh no, is it cute? You guys, I gotta this look was away. not why I brought it up. Oh my god, I want to put a butt plug in and look at before and after. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. Look how good she looks. We should do an episode where we all wear butt plugs. And just our asses on the uh, You don't want to use it? <laughs> you don't want to save it for the sleepover? That, or that if you prefer your idea. Yeah, I'll take your idea. <laughs> I saw this old picture of Kendra Wilkinson of Girls Next Door fame, right. the best show of all time. Um, she was wearing this tank top. It was very like Y2K. And it said, I have the pussy, so I make the rules. And I know that is like meant as a joke. But when you think about it as like from an existential place, we are because we have the womb. Mm -hmm literally men's survival what i just it's like you learn things that are like very obvious yeah but very late in life and it's so weird no 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 you we are the choosers this whole time i thought like a man has to a man ha, a man has to choose me but no it's like we are their survival depends on our wombs so we actually are in charge this i know that's meant as a joke i have the pussy so i have the power but it's actually true any clip it have you never felt <laughs> like the chooser in your life Oh no. Chosen one. No, I've never felt like a chooser. I've always felt like a like the the chooser. Have you? Maybe not when I was super young, but like, you know, maybe 25 and over, definitely. Yeah, I mean as you evolve as a person, yeah. And I was never like choose me, choose me. I've never been in that. You're like a life. tadpole of a person. This is crazy. <laughs> You've always is known. Is this you, like, are you pandering to a younger audience right now? Why? Because I look small? This is a child, like, no, no. I, I, I know what you're, what you're saying. saying. No, it's just you <laughs> just grow out of it. You just grow out of that. You didn't. But that's a good message for, No, so your ultimatum, bitch. You're totally the chooser. Yeah, like, once we got together, but I just, I truly always you thought, You wanted like, him to like you. It's you like, know what? Also, this is, like, fucking sex in the city brainwashing rhetoric. Like, oh, we're going to be single. We need a man. Like, no, we're supposed to. That's the, that is the opposite of what we're saying. I now. just flash forward to like 20 years from now when I'm like, I won't do a cameo on this. <laughs> and then you guys pay me enough and I do a phone cameo. Oh, <laughs> oh for um, Samantha. <gasps> is that all she did was a phone cameo? Wait, are you serious? But all the headlines Don't you want to know that tea? In the next, Don't you yeah. want to know that tea? Well, so we funny. have a pipeline towards it. Mm. Oh, oh yeah. Do, but he doesn't know where he's at. Yeah, he doesn't know anything. He doesn't know what day <laughs> it is. He hardly remembers his name. You think he's going to know? He, he knows Kim the Cattrall, freaking yeah. Kim Cattrall. Yeah. Sarah just SJP drama. I love when she's like, I like when she goes, I just feel like that character's done. And everyone's like, we want it. And she's like, sorry. I mean, that is fucking bold. And then she's like, all right, I'll come back. Well, how much money do you think that fucking voice cameo is? She's goals. That's like crazy. She's like, okay. I don't know. She calls in. It's like a $10 million phone call <laughs> potentially. <laughs> so smart. <laughs> and everyone's just like, you know, slaving away day to day on set. And she's just like, what? Well, Sarah Jessica Parker's wearing like birds on her head still <laughs> for the 25th year in a row. <laughs> but do you, do you really, do you feel? You're trying to tell me that you already know and have that in your body that like It took me a while to get there. It took me a while to but you I always knew that was like the goal and I knew that like I you do know like the power that you have is You're like I make the babies. You so know what? No, you know what it is? I think it's when you when you get old enough to realize I think for me, when I was younger, I if everyone didn't like me, 
I didn't think anyone liked, you know what I mean? So I needed every guy to like me or every, and that just was oh, ever. Oh, I see. So I would take like the rejection of like, oh, well, if they don't want me, I'm not like a value. But it's like, I do like understand that the woman's body is, but I mean, we also need guys' sperm, so it's not. It's just we have to do all the stuff. So but I do think that's an important thing to remember, especially if you're in a position where you feel like, oh, like, I hope he chooses me to be like, no, 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 no. Like you you have the control. You're in the freaking driver's seat. But anxious attachment is like for me, I would be dating guys and I'd be like, oh, I hope they like like I'd want these answers from them. And I didn't even get to a place where I could decide whether I wanted to be with them yet because I was so overwhelmed with like that they figuring like out you. whether they like. Yeah. I see. Yeah. But I also think specifically with that shirt, it's like I would probably have looked at that like 10 years ago or whatever and been like, oh, yeah, like you have the pussy, you have the power, like men want to have sex. So you're in control. But it's so much deeper than that. It's right. literally like, no, you can't your genes can't be passed on without this pussy <laughs> yeah <laughs> your seed can't grow without me yeah you're just a seed you're just spunk <laughs> like you're just white creamy thing there's like so many sperms too like yeah, so there's like many two million or so how many, how many just, sperm are in a load you know. Ugh. <laughs> and only like one or two gets through it's like really actually quite pathetic it's pathetic but you know there's a hundred million sperm in each load wow a hundred million. Isn't that what? crazy? Yeah. For cream pie. Just one cream pie. A hundred million sperm. And like million one. babies. Can you believe you survived out of that many? That How is pathetic amazing. were those other? That's amazing. <laughs> oh. And the fact All that they those. were maybe a little slower since their daddies were old. Yeah. And you're a twin. What does that even mean? I have no clue. <laughs> I still don't understand. Same egg. No, two eggs fertilized at the same time. By different sperms? Yes. I don't know. I'm. You think I'm a co-sperm? <laughs> <laughs> we would have. We would have identical twins. twins. This is you know split what? After I feel like after yeah, we're split before. Yeah. Oh. I feel like your brother got in there first, and you're like, nah, nah, nah. I kicked him out. You know, right? <laughs> what do you mean? When he was born, when we were born, he came out first, and then I came out feet first. <laughs> like I kicked him physically out, and no one can tell me like my mom would be like, we were just kidding, and I'm like, remember that joke? And she's like, oh, they weren't kidding. Does. Does your mom ever talk about like that it was really hard to carry two at once? She, I have never in my life felt like my mom chose to have me anyway. She was always like, <laughs> she's like, I was so overwhelmed. I only wanted two children. Oh, I'm like, okay, bitch, playing baseball and stuff. I wonder which kid you wanted, the boy or the girl? With her short hair and her baseball hat. Oh, I wonder which one you were. But that is crazy. Can you imagine like you already have one and then you want one more and you get two? Well, my my the, when they were in doing the ultrasound and they found out it was twins, my dad was like, yes. And my mom just started like crying. <laughs> but my mom like my mom had um, her mom died right when she was pregnant with me. So right before oh. she found out we were twins. So that was probably like the most devastating thing. And her mom had been, her mom was diagnosed with ovarian cancer when my mom was 15 and she went to like boarding school and they brought her into the office and were like, your mom has like six months to live, but she doesn't want you to come home. Oh my God. Because she didn't want to like disrupt her education or whatever. So then my mom had, was like, like couldn't be with her mom. And then her mom ended up living for another 15 years after that till my mom was 31. And then she ended up dying right when my mom, she got to meet Timmy, which was good. Oh, okay. But then she died right when my mom was, right before she found out she was pregnant with twins. So like, I think that's like everything. And she was adopted. Like there's like a lot with my mom. Wow. You know, I think um, that reminds me of something that I often overlook about my mom. When we, when we came to America, we didn't have a lot of money at all. Like a lot, like paycheck to paycheck. My dad's like veterans pay, like very, like our rent was like $350 a month in like this one bedroom place. And my mom, mom my grandma, my, my mom's mom, so my mom's brother died um, maybe two years into us being in America. We, we still didn't really have a lot of money. And, and he then, was in the Philippines? Yeah. Okay. And so one of her brothers killed the other brother. What? And then a month later, my grandma died. Right. And imagine my mom, who's so close to her. So wait, your uncles that the, are the murders are your mom's brothers. brothers? Your mom's brother killed your, her other, other brother. brother. 
Wait, and then that's my grandma then tears. died from the heartbreak of that. I'm taking it in, honestly. Hold on. But she could not go home, you guys. She does say these things very normally. <laughs> PTSD. <laughs> yeah, it's just to say it normal. It's for intellectualizing. Yeah. It. Um, but she could not go home. She was still on like I don't think her green card had been like finalized. How many other siblings were there? Um, she there are a total of ten. Ten. But it okay. was her mom. I, right. Like she recently told me, she's like. I, I couldn't go home to my mother. I couldn't be by her side. And it's not like, like it, it, it's because she couldn't, like just her visa wouldn't allow right, it. Right. Her, the money could, couldn't allow it. And it was just heartbreaking. I was like, my mom endured this trauma in her forties of not being able to go back to her mother. And I really feel for her. Like, imagine that. Imagine if something happened to her mm -hmm. parents and we couldn't get to them. We couldn't grow Well, with that happened family. to so many people during COVID and stuff. I know. My mom was just telling me that she met this woman at a memorial that one of my for one of my dad's friends. And um and she was saying like her husband got sick during COVID and she had to put him into a she couldn't take care of him, so she had to put him into a nursing home. And it was like I think right before she put him into the nursing home and then COVID hit and she couldn't so she didn't get to be with him and she's like still recovering from it just the trauma of not being with him yeah. it's like it's so sad it's like it's so i think it's like why it's so important if you can like do all of your work with people like as soon as possible and your forgiveness and your talks with them while they're alive because you will be able to get there but it's like so much easier when they're like still with you'd have to process all that stuff after someone dies is like but the fact that a nursing home has the right to not allow you to it see wasn't your... a right it was covid, yeah, it, was COVID. it was like they, COVID. no one was allowed to go anywhere remember no one could go in and see anyone i know it's so sad it's so sad but i i know what you're saying and then my mom like my mom's been really, um, she's been doing a lot of meditation and stuff. And she's she's just like, was saying to me, she's like, I I think about you every time I do it because I think about my mom. And she's like, there's just this like woman connection that I have with you guys. And she's like, I just am. And she's like always cry so sweet. Like she's really, we're like in a really good wow. vibes place and sweet. That is but I always good. think about it too, like with all this stuff, like, because I told my fucking high school story on Ryan Sickler's podcast again and God, it's just like, I just get fucking torn open every time I fucking tell yeah. it. As much as I think I'm okay, it's like, it really gets me. And then it's like, you know, people always want to like, I mean, that's definitely not the episode to watch, read comments on. <laughs> it's like one of those, but it's like, you know, the people that like get mad at my parents for like not protect me or whatever. Like I just, I always try to say like, it's like when when I die and when my parents die, like the only thing that I will take with me is like the way I love them. You know, it's not I'm not going to hold on to like any yeah, of the 100 percent other and shit. Like imagine if you were to look at life based on like just one season of your life, one mm -hmm. season of your parents life. You've lived a ton of lives. Mm -hmm. Like think about where you were when you're 19, where you are now, yeah. like even in between that, like I feel like how many lives have I lived? Yeah. The fact that also you're even saying that with like the words YouTube comments, even in the conversation, it's like, of course that doesn't matter. Of course, it, it doesn't does matter at all, matter. yeah. But I mean, I guess for me, it's like, cause that was something that I like struggled with. When I, when I tell the story, it's like, I'm I'm conscious of the fact that I'm now giving this to like be interpreted by yes. like strangers yeah. or also, whatever. I, I think that's a good, to, right. I think that's a good thing to um, talk about. It's like, you know, we talk about our parents in a very like factual way this is what happened this is how they hurt me whatever whatever but like we're all really close to our parents today yeah like a reminder to everybody say. that like like you know parent child relationships like are a very nuanced like ongoing journey but like just because my mom was that person back then to me it doesn't mean she's this person today also we don't even remember yeah i so thought you many were gonna things. say we're all unreliable narrators but, I mean, but it's also true. that like, but they also say 50 percent of like your memory is like exaggerated yeah, or whatever it's true and you're able to convince yourself off like if you were coping in that moment at 16 like that whatever you believe can then be your new truth like you you can form like synapses with the wrong yeah. memory like that that can happen but also the like the moment you're talking about which is like it is funny like you're that they found out it was twins your dad was excited your mom was crying like that if you take like take that microcosm it's like so of all men and women like 
because the women have to do, do a lot of the so work. much yeah so it's and like, my dad was looking at like ego style like my fucking sperm made twins and my mom's like are you fucking kidding me mm -hmm. motherfucker like i totally empathize with your mom there because she's like knows what that and then they're growing in you and you don't know what that does to your body and her Is mom had literally just died too it's like it's just so and it had been that like long like to be told your mom has six months to live and then she lives 15 years and then like so it's like also, the anxiety she must have had that whole time also i imagine that if i if i were to ever get pregnant that my mom would be my number one ally mm -hmm. like she would be the person who would be my fucking coach from beginning to end i need that i can be my worst self with her i don't have to worry about how my hormones are gonna either end this relationship she's there no matter what it's just i can be my most ugly hormonal self and she can just kind of walk me through this season in my life mm -hmm. like that's how i see my mom right how old's your mom she's in her 60s she's 62 okay. but by the way i want to say um that when you mentioned your whole like teacher story thing the reason that the girl that i made out with over the weekend and i actually made out is because she told a story about um like we had just like we were talking about like sexual traumas and she had a very similar story as like yours. And immediately I felt like super like bonded <laughs> to her. She had just watched the. Thank you uh, to my high school teacher again, lesbos together. So, yeah. And so her thing was like this teach. She, she hadn't had her glow up yet. She's really pretty now, but like she was this kid who like no one kind of paid attention to except for the teacher. And she was like, oh, he sees like my potential. So he would like give her gifts so and things like that. Mom. But anyway, she told me the story and I felt like I was like, oh, I think. And then, you know, we let you oh, out. Because that's because so. you really want to kiss me. That's yeah, that's all it I is. did not love that story. It is, um, <laughs> it is like, it is weird. Like, okay, because I'm like, I thought like I could intellectualize it. I could be like, you know, mm -hmm. I'm doing ketamine treatment. Like, I'm, you know, I can separate myself from it. The other night, I just went crazy. I was in Baltimore. I was in my hotel room alone. I went deep diving, finding these people. I was like, I mean, there's just things that feel unresolved, I think. And I don't know if I have to resolve them myself or very publicly. I don't know what it is, but. Well, we've talked about this amongst each other. It's like, do we out these people? Because I asked you guys, you know, I sent you like the court case of the doctor. And he's obviously like the doctor who um, sexually assaulted my sister and I. He's lost his license. He's like not, a, you know, you saw the court cases mm -hmm. that I sent you. He's in big, big trouble, right? But I think for you, like, I feel for you because it does feel more unresolved. When I look for my perpetrator, it's clear. He's There's, out I don't, of business. I can't find he's any, done. He's still out there. He's like, fine. It's like, and I did the thing. I sat in court and shit. Exactly. So, it's so frustrating. I didn't sit in court, but I have more of a resolve, like a resolution in mind because I see that he's being, he's paying the price for what he did to me. Yeah. And I think for you, Annie, like what really breaks my heart and I think why. He did block know, me on Instagram. Oh, well, that's a win. And I saw like there was some like he's not like that. Like he can't be. There's oh, a, you must be his worst nightmare. Oh, I, I can't wait. I like, like and then he and then so and then he like there was something like one little clip of him on YouTube. And the only comment was predator. Wait, oh, I'm sorry, really? I just realized something, please. Can you imagine if you molested someone and it took Wrong girl. Wait, he... can I just tell you, that's how I felt the whole time. I was like, are you crazy? Like, obviously I'm going to go to the police. Like, <laughs> I'm going to go to the bodega guy. Obviously I'm going go to go to everyone. A, a, a podcaster and comedian. Like... Yeah, it's like, duh. And then, and like, okay, so then I looked up, this is where I got triggered. I looked up his ex-wife, who was like 100% involved in the grooming of all of it. Which was she in court with him? Um, I don't think she went to court. Mm. No, she didn't get any. No, nothing happened to her. But she lives very close to us. She lives a, an hour drive from us. And I looked, I found her on Instagram and I saw all of her. She follows a bunch of female comedians that I'm friends with. <gasps> and I'm like, oh, do you like female comedians? You fucking and she makes mugs. I want to be like, cute mugs. Where's your mug shot, bitch? Like, do you know how close I was to like, commenting that on one of her her things? Whoa. You I like female comedian? Like, it just triggered me so much. And by the way, like, this is like my anger inside of me that's still there. So it's like, 
I don't know. I just am like, there's just something like, and I don't know if it's, this is this thing I can just like fold up and like bury, or if it's like, I just don't know what, if it's for me to like release more information publicly, or if it's for me to like release my ties to this. What or maybe, question, cause I, I'm like, yeah, what is it? I, at least for me, it's the acceptance that I allow it to affect me however which way it affects mm -hmm. me that day. Yes. Some days I feel stronger. Some months I feel stronger. And then some days I want to fucking rage out and burn someone's right. house. And I think that I, I'm nice to myself in those days. And I'm like, okay, this is normal. It's, you know, my, my rage yeah. bubbles and then it's back down. My rage bubbles. And I think the acceptance of knowing that this is probably going to be something I carry with for the rest of my life in different ways makes me like sleep a little better at yeah. night. it's just like you know but yeah I, it, but i know what I, knew, I mean i know what you're saying and it's like it's just for me like i had just like one like very crazy trip and you're right it's like forgive yourself for that but it's like i was like texting josh potter like picture screen he's like stop sending me these pictures he's like no i don't want to see them i'm like sending him pictures i'm like look at this fucking asshole look at and he's like oh my god he's like and he's like annie you just have to like focus on how good your life is like you know like really which is good advice because i'm like i was like spinning and um and then in the morning i was like oh my god delete those pictures i'm sorry like, you're right. oh my god. but i was like we're taking them down like we're gonna go find you know because like part of me just it's like I get it. The rage fantasies. I get. But I it's like, it's just like, it is there. And I do have this platform and it's like, there are, I could scorch the earth. Yeah. And I'm like, why am I not? Is it out of like protection of myself or am I still protecting these but people? But even imagine if you go scorched earth and you still don't feel better. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, there's this part of me that's like the school is not being held accountable. They've had so many other predators that I've found out about that were not it, this was not just this person this was like an establishment as well so there's like this larger thing and the fact that some of those teachers are still there not the ones that i that did anything but the ones that were like complacent in it and involved and were the it's just like how is that school still going how is there no like newspaper article about it i would do like, it what did my parents sign like, I, what the fuck did they sign some sort of like silence thing or whatever i never so, realized that there's no like i can't find it i'm the public record of it yeah, that can, I, I see how that's like super. And I'm sure I can find court documents. Like I'm sure, like my dad was like at one point, like I'll help you, but they, it's like, it's also so upsetting for my parents. Like they cannot. Ugh. So they're like, they just shut down when I bring mm -hmm. it up. They're like, stop talking about it. Like, don't worry about it. Like, stop Annie. Like, yeah. My and my dad will like defend the school. Like the school is good for some kids. It's like, but I don't care. Like if the school is good, but like that will show itself in the more I investigate and stuff. But they want me to be good. And they also, I think, it's just too much for them exactly. to bear. Exactly. No, that to me, that makes so much sense. It's like they love you so much that it's probably so challenging to their reality to even mm -hmm, go there. To the reality. That's what it is. Like, and it's like, I don't want like right now, my parents are 72 and my dad's turning 82. Like I they have like anxieties. My dad, like last time I was home, he's like he's worrying about like he doesn't want to be a burden to us. And it's like I want to like help him understand that it's like my pleasure to like take him however yeah. he is yeah like, and it's like and then like a lot with the money i'm having such like anxiety about money and how i like i've spent and i don't have a house and stuff because i would love for my dad to like to take care of my parents like i love that and todd's like yeah. todd's family always had all of his grandparents and stuff so now i'm like I'm starting to like regret the way I had been with my money in the past, you know. But, but I still okay. want that Louis Vuitton. And that's normal. <laughs> just one little one. Like, just one little one. Are, what you're saying now are like such normal, relatable anxieties. It's like literally, I don't know a person in this country that's not like stressed about how they spent their money and which yeah. like are, like what you're saying is literally the most normal but it's so important also to not sh like i enjoyed spending every fucking penny i spent last year like yeah it, and it felt really good and it was like so exciting for me and i do still feel like i live in abundance and stuff but it's like right now the fact that i can't like snap my fingers and have like a fucking compound where like todd's parents and my parents can all just like live with us and like hang out but like everyone everyone yeah. wants to snap their fingers but i think what's that. so special about what you're saying like even though like you're expressing it as something that is like a stressor in your life mm -hmm. like a financial thing like i see it as like wow you've come to the part of your life where like like not only are you able to do these nice things mm -hmm. for your parents and yeah. provide but now there is like you're getting closer to the dream of like having your parents yeah. like, live closer to you and maybe like you know see them yeah. at like you know this time in their life yeah. like i don't know i think like you know 
it's a privilege for me now to feel the stress, the financial stress, mm -hmm. because I've taken on the responsibility of my mother, of a lot of people in my family. And even though it's a difficult responsibility, like I do it with pleasure, mm -hmm. like you said. Like yeah, it does like bring me, I wanna, I, it yeah. makes me happy. I never do it like, oh fuck, I have to do this. I'm like, no, I get to do this. This was my dream. I right. wanted to make enough money to do this for them so that they never have to worry. So they, my mom never has to take out her credit card. Like yeah. I feel good. I know, but I also like look into it. I'm like, there is an unhealth unhealthy aspect of it big time where it's like, it's guilt, like where I'm like, I'm almost like apologizing for my existence. Like mm. I want to like pay. And, and that's the thing that like worries me like that will, cause I've been having a lot of like, what do they call it? Nocturnal panic attacks where I keep like waking up in the middle of the night. Put it here, girl. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I, that's I really, all like, day. And I do, I, I can't tell you how much work I do on myself. Like, I mean, I literally like, I do treatments, therapies, yeah. everything. Like, I mean, I'm really working on it and I do have like, I am realizing I have like an, an addiction and a habit to anxiety and I just have to like really work Same. on on <laughs> we know. Esther, you don't get nocturnal panic attacks? No. Oh my oh, I hope God. we don't curse you with them. It's, it's like fun. a period. <laughs> it's so not fun. You're oxygen depleted. You're not breathing. It's fucking scary. You're disoriented. You don't know where the fuck you are. I don't have but I don't have night terrors, which is like crazy. I don't my ex boyfriend terrors. had night terrors where he would like he would lunge. Like I would wake up and he'd be like in my face like, like I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm like, <laughs> you're not dead, but am I about to be dead? <laughs> Please? Why do I have to be scared for my life too? But he wouldn't know at all where he was or anything. I just wake up like with full like, like worry and it'll be very mundane things that are not like that. But it is all I think surrounding really like taking on a lot of my parents anxiety and like, but so in these situations, it's like if they're going like, I don't want like we like when you talk about this, it's like upsetting to us. It's like hard for me to imagine doing like a documentary about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that but is, it's their separate thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But honestly, everything you're saying right now is like so spot on relatable, like in to everyone in different ways. Like, yeah, I just think like I relate to everything you're saying. I'm like, oh, that's so something I'm working on too is like my anxiety. Like, yes, yours pops you up at night, but like my intrusive thoughts throughout the day, like I'm constantly working on managing that. It is so hard. Like, yeah, I just feel so connected to everything you said. And yeah. also like I used to always be like, I need to move my parents out here. And then I remember I did Maria Menounos' podcast and her mom and dad had like moved out from Boston to live with her and her husband. And they were like, well... Like, it may not, like, they were very much like, you need to, like, put the brakes on any kind of, like, that may not be the right thing. And that yeah. really sh shifted my perspective. And, and, like, I love my parents. I fucking love them. I love taking them out to dinner. Like, I love visiting them. But I don't necessarily want them, like, next door anymore. I love you guys. Yeah. But, you know? And it's also, like, I don't know how it's going to end up. Like, I don't know. But it's, like, I do, like, I feel like the the idea that's not an option for me right now is that's where it's like oh you know but they don't even want that either it's just <laughs> know, like it's so like funny. they don't want to fucking live with me but <laughs> they're like what are you talking about? it's just you know i just want them to like i just want them to have like the least burden on them right now what did our parents do to us that we like are so desperate Obsessed with them. <laughs> it's really interesting we're so pathetic about them <laughs> so obsessed with them i don't know what happened yeah thank you for sharing that annie i think yeah. that's going to resonate with a lot of people only because it's like we are at that age where we do have to consider that our parents are aging and we at some point we will be their caretakers yeah. and that is a reality for so many people and um we unfortunately in america we live in a very like nuclear family system where we don't live with um you know extended family members who can assist in the caretaking or have those different jobs like that's why i always tell my mom when you're ready to move back to the philippines i'm still going to do this podcast <laughs> um but you know everything there is a community effort we are go in, with her yeah i would buy her a home oh there God, are you guys gonna do episodes there too <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's kind of like that thing where it's like there's always someone there to help it's yeah. not just a two three four person household there's usually but like that's 12 how, to 15 like todd okay so yeah like they obviously they have so todd's three brothers or two brothers they had both sides of the grandparents live with them and like i mean todd saw them die like i mean it's like the whole thing yeah they never went in nursing homes or i love that i, I think it, that it also be, it is part be, of like capitalism yeah. right and the reason why i think a lot of you know americans in general like are generally sadder and you go to other countries that are 
live in abject poverty, but you see their families and you're like, okay, fucked up things happen, but there is a feeling of support and motherhood and aging in a lot of different ways mm-hmm. that... I pose an argument against you both, which okay. is like... Because I, I really did used to be all about this. Like, I want to live with my parents forever. Like, I grew up in my this the house that my grandparents bought. Like, but... Like, doesn't it feel really great to, like, go home and it's just you and Todd and it's, like... No, no, no. I'm not saying that this is, like... the th- But it is, it is like... And same to you. Are you... You really want to yeah. live with your yeah. mom? Like- not my mom, but, like, uh, having people in the house hearing the buzz of, like, family and support yeah, and but someone always you- going to play with my hair. Like, I love it. But what if you just met, like, some great guy and you want to, like... He might die and then it's gone. That support is gone. That's what she thought. That's what she thought. That yeah. was her first thought. Wait, what? If I rely, if I she put all my thought, eggs, he might die. I didn't even look. I didn't even look. <laughs> <laughs> she just immediately went to he might die, and then I'll be gone. Wait, okay, so you're planning something. <laughs> this is why she has forty-seven dogs. She's like, <laughs> I got them stacked, so I'm not. I'm not never. I just learned that the reason that I have forty-seven dogs, by the way, is from complex PTSD. That is a hallmark sign. Like throwing all of your like effort into, into things other that yeah. Too. Like dog people usually have some type of like complex trauma. Yeah. <laughs> but no I just sure. learned. I'm like, oh it makes sense. I even when my plate is so full, <laughs> I'm gonna get two more foster dogs, usually blind and usually like dragging their legs and Aww. I need to th- because it but it's soothing myself even though yeah. it's like I would love to be like oh she's so you know she's so great she really wants to help dogs I do but I also want to help myself it gets we me out of it we need to check on Whitney and Miranda Cosgrove <laughs> hearing <laughs> yes. this news <laughs> <laughs> a thousand oh um I yeah my dad I was always like I'm gonna buy you a house dad and he would like he would be like I think at this point it might just be a really nice urn <laughs> <laughs> But I know what you're saying, too. It's like, I don't have to. It's not like, it's not like I have to, but it is something I would like to have as an option. I think and the compound idea is really nice. Like when you, Wouldn't it be like, so awesome? So awesome. To just like, imagine, Esther. I'd be rich enough to have people, like, you know, helping out. I just think, honestly, what's coming up is, like, if your dad, like, n- thought that you in any way felt like you knew, Yeah, he wouldn't want that. He'd be yeah. like, fuck. You. He doesn't want to be a bird. I mean, that's like the whole Your thing. Your dad loves you. You're yeah. all that matters. He was just sure. like, he's like, my two great aunts, like, they needed to be strapped down. I'm like, you're not going to need to be strapped down, but I'll strap your ass down. <laughs> strap you down. Dude, my dad took a diaper full of his own shit and like slapped my sister with it. He, <laughs> he had a, 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 a moment of a no lucidity. Like, he was Were you a little confused. jealous? You're like, what about me? He was like, who the fuck are you? And then he then called me on the phone because I wasn't there. And he was like, there's a stranger in my home. She's trying to rob me. And my, I could hear my sister in the background be like, Papa, it's me. Oh, and he was wiping like, shit fucking... off her face, trying not to get pink eye. <laughs> he was trying to <laughs> fling his shit at her. I love that Kyla already went through all the trauma I of know. elder care when she was like 14. <laughs> I did. I really did. Uh, That's okay. Again, it was my pleasure. Yeah. Like it was all of our pleasure. It was very painful, but it was good to be by his side to the very end. Yeah. Well, you guys of the very end. <laughs> this is going to be our last episode. <gasps> Just kidding. We will thank you for being here. We love you. We shared. We laughed. We cried. We got a little wet in the butt. Um, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> plug it up. Brand Don't forget new to plug it up. DPDP. Episode. Let us know what you think about plugs <laughs> in the comments. Bye, guys. Bye.